to The Fitterist Show with your host, Christopher Allen, where we explore the art of mind and body conditioning. This week, Under Armour announced that it is unloading MyFitnessPal just five and a half years after acquiring it for $475 million. The sale of MyFitnessPal to investment firm Francisco Partners will allow Under Armour to focus on its core products and brand. Whoop, a maker of personal wearable fitness trackers, closed a funding round valuing the company at more than $1 billion. Finally, digital coaching app maker Future secures a $24 million funding round, Series B, to fund product development and growth strategies. We'll take a look at these companies and what's next in this week's show. So, let's dive in. Fitness giant Under Armour announced that it is selling MyFitnessPal to investment firm Francisco Partners for $345 million, again, five and a half years after acquiring it for $475 million, so a $130 million loss. The company also announced that it will be winding down the Endomondo platform, which it acquired at the same time as MyFitnessPal, and they spent $85 million dollars to acquire that platform. Now in the press release, Under Armour indicated that it was really around simplifying, focusing around the brand and the quote, focused performer in building a singular cohesive Under Armour ecosystem. However, the fact that they're dumping these and they're selling them for far less than they acquired them and MyFitnessPal has grown over the last five years in both users and usage There seems to be a little bit more to it than just we want to stay focused at our core focused performer within the cohesive Under Armour ecosystem. Now, Under Armour did make it a point to say that they will continue to operate the Map My Fitness platform, which includes the Map My Run and Map My Ride, saying that these are a crucial element of their digital strategy and it connects to its connected footwear business. In the breakout of their financials, the connected fitness segment for Under Armour, as expected, is relatively small right now. So it includes MyFitnessPal, Matt My Fitness. It was about $37 million on a company run rate of $1.43 billion sales during the third quarter. So if you look at it, it's still small. And the company spent $150 million on Matt My Fitness back in 2013. But connected fitness has really been a hot trend and a big investment area in recent months, particularly fueled by the pandemic. Apple launched its own Fitness Plus service for 10 bucks a month in September. Peloton has its $12.99 kind of a la carte, don't need the bike fitness service. And Peloton stock through the roof. I think it's 113 today. Again, fueled a lot by the pandemic, but when you look at the space of connected fitness in the marketplace, there are a lot of players and a lot of money flowing into companies investing in this space. Apple, you've got Peloton, you've got Tempo, you've got Mirror, which is owned by Lululemon, Whoop, Fitbit, Jack Jocks, Echelon, Icon Health and Fitness, Studio, Strava. There's a lot of companies in this space. Now, Not all of them might make it, but there is a fueled growth that is being supported by funds flowing into these companies for connected and digital fitness. Also in the company's press release, they indicated that MyFitnessPal has more than 200 million users. And when they acquired it back in 2015, they had 80 million. So healthy growth in users. What they did not disclose, of course, is active users. So going from 80 million accounts. 200 million accounts is great. How many people are actively using the app? Unknown. But the thinking is that MyFitnessPal and Endomondo were more at entry-level fitness, and Under Armour wants to shift their brand persona toward more professional athletics. And with companies like Apple coming in and being much more aggressive at that entry-level fitness users with things like the Apple Watch, Apple Health, Google with Google Fit, and the like that Under Armour didn't see as much of a brand fit with MyFitnessPal and Endomondo. 
So with Apple leading the way and being more aggressive with the Apple Watch and the kind of entry-level fitness program targeted at a lower cost subscription, the thinking is that Under Armour didn't necessarily think that a lower entry service was going to be as successful and aligned with the brand and where they want to take the brand. Obviously, Under Armour's got a lot of issues to fix in the broader scope. They are clearly moving based on what they're doing in retail and distribution channels. They're clearly moving much more to a direct-to-consumer model and trying to kind of flushing out a lot of inventory through retail channels right now and building out their e-commerce and direct-to-consumer to carry premium price points. So we'll see how that goes. I'm a big fan of MyFitnessPal. I've used it a lot in the past to track diet. We'll see what Francisco Partners does with it. Right now, they're going to continue to let it operate as an independent. And it might actually be better for MyFitnessPal because from what I've read and what I've seen in the app, MyFitnessPal did not really evolve that much in five and a half years. They didn't, there was no breakthroughs. They didn't really introduce any interesting features it worked. It did what it's supposed to do, but that's about it. And I think users are looking for more innovation and hopefully the new MyFitnessPal can provide that. And in our second news story, we first looked at Whoop in episode 72 of the Fitters show when the University of Tennessee partnered with Whoop to provide a Whoop strap to the entire UT athletics program of more than 600 athletes across 20 different sports. And since then, Whoop has continued to grow. The fitness tracking company announced on October 28th that it just closed a $100 million financing round valuing the company at $1.2 billion. And this latest round of investors includes people like Patrick Mahomes, Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, Larry Fitzgerald, Kevin Durant, a lot more celebrity athletes getting behind and investing in Whoop. And the funding round was led by venture capital firm IVP, which will get a board seat with Whoop, and other participating investors in the round included SoftBank, the Vision Fund, the Vision Fund 2, Accomplice, Two Sigma Ventures, Collaborative Fund, Thursday Ventures, Next View Ventures, Promise Adventures, Kava Ventures and D20 Capitals. Clearly, a lot of interest from a lot of VCs in the connected fitness space with Whoop. What is Whoop going to do with the funds? Well, a lot of it's going to be investing in membership, the overall experience, a lot of investment in R&D software, analytics, hardware, and really bolstering kind of the coaching aspect of Whoop. The CEO said that they really want to be kind of the 24-7 life coach to tell you where you need to improve and kind of the program to help you do just that. Other uses of the proceeds might be going to hire more employees. Now, the company has grown quite a bit. They're headquartered in Boston, and they now have more than 330 employees. So they've hired 200 new employees in 2020. So they are growing. And while Whoop didn't comment on actual subscriber numbers, they do say that they have been growing a subscriber base. Remember, it's about 30 bucks a month. And they say they've been growing quickly over the last 12 months due to an increased overall level of health during the pandemic. Now, Whoop has raised more than $200 million in funding to date. So it's really impressive from a growth perspective. Now, Whoop also disclosed that they have had an increase in their overall profile during the pandemic because... Some of its users have noticed changes in their health scores that apparently has served as an early indicator of coronavirus symptoms. In particular, PGA Tour golfer Nick Watney said he was wearing his Whoop fitness tracker that first alerted him that that he may have coronavirus. He was before an event and he noticed his respiratory rate had spiked based on the data from the Whoop app. Despite Not feeling any of the physical symptoms associated with COVID-19, he decided to get tested and discovered that he actually tested positive for coronavirus. And of course, following his diagnosis, the PGA Tour actually signed a deal with Whoop to make their product available to all of the PGA Tour golfers and caddies that wanted one. 
The PGA went on to note that they actually finished their recent tour season with fewer than 10 positive cases over 18 different golfing events. Now, granted, the Whoop Fitness Tracker isn't a prevention device. It's just a potential, potential early indicator based on things like the respiratory rate that Nick Watney had experienced. So it could be an indicator of things like that. And in working with leagues like the PGA, the CEO of Whoop has also indicated now that they are starting to look at a business segment to help large companies and teams better understand their bodies and health. So when you're starting to look at a new potential opportunity where companies sponsor or help defray the cost potentially of a Whoop subscription to help their employees track their overall fitness and monitor their overall health. So we'll see how they go from here, but clearly Unicorn Company, over a billion dollars valuation, got lots more room to grow. And in our third news story... San Francisco-based Future that makes a digital coaching app raised $24 million from TrustBridge partners Kleiner Perkins, Caffeinated Capital, other athletes and founders, as well as existing investors that upped for the next round. Now, the company, Future, really tries to pair its consumers with a remote personal fitness coach that provides weekly training plans that can be adjusted to the individual's tailored lifestyle. These coaches then check in on the user, on their smartwatch, or on their phone to make sure they're following their plans, encouraging them through texts, and offer nutrition lifestyle guidance through the app. The company's website also advertises kind of a welcome kit for new customers that includes a loaner Apple Watch for those that don't already own one. So why did Future create this app? Well, first they started looking at some of the statistics, right, that most Americans up to 75, 80% don't exercise enough or at all, though the majority people pick a new workout routine every year. About 70% of people are rated as overweight or obese, and the majority live with chronic health conditions. The quality of life is not great. And when people's health suffers, a lot of other areas of their life suffer. Happiness, productivity, sense of adventure. So where future is really betting is on coaching. They believe that coaching and having a coach is the key for people to make consistent progress. And they use the analogy of looking at professional athletes, executives, right? Celebrities, people have voice coaches, people have professional football players. There's quarterback coaches, receiver coaches, hands coaches, footwork coaches for all sports. And a coach provides that expertise and that accountability to get the most out of yourself. But for most people, for the average person, it's hard to find a quality coach that's local and then schedule time on a regular basis and have it be a great experience and not break the bank. So a coach kind of lightens that load by doing the research and planning. They've got the experience to make realistic workout routines. And again, having that feedback loop where your coach is expecting, they check in with you to make sure that you are holding yourself accountable. You are doing what you said you're going to do and you're going to your morning walk. You're eating that chicken and broccoli for lunch, things like that. And they're utilizing technology to do that because they said, hey, look, you can't find personal trainers in every locale, but let's partner with a select group of good trainers that have proven expertise and build these partnerships and then pair up individuals wherever they are in the world with this pool of great trainers and try to match the trainer to the person based on the person's personal fitness goals. So if I want to gain a lot of weight, they're probably not going to pair me with a marathon training coach. They're going to pair me with someone that is used to training programs about resistance training, endurance, and strength training. So Future really espouses the virtues of their model. They're saying that having a coach helps you track and stay on track with your 
fitness plan. The Apple Watch, which is included free with a membership, constantly helps to track your progress. The coach then holds them accountable to the plan. And via the text messages, the coach is not kind of a passive, if you have a question, let me know. They actually reach out proactively and get involved. And they cite some stats that their methodology is actually working. They say on average that their members complete 15 monthly workouts, one every other day, which is not bad. That's three or four days a week. And they trade on average, again, four text messages with their coach every day, which is pretty impressive. And they kind of compare it to the other health interactions you might have in your life. You might see your doctor one, two, three times a year. And the interactions you have, even though they're via text with a coach, could be up to 1,500 times per year. So they're kind of saying, hey, this is much more personalized and you get much more feedback much more quickly from a coach. Now, they're not equating a coach to a doctor. That's not their intent. They're just saying from an interaction and feedback perspective, some interesting stats. So what is Future doing with the funds? Well, they look toward the future and they look at continuing to scale and evolve their business. They're looking at tools and technology to help the coaches be either more productive and more helpful with their members. So they're trying to look at things like real-time exercise rep counting using those wearable sensors to drive further accountability so that the coach can know if you did all your reps or not. They also want to look at different ways to help people work out with friends, whether they are a next-door neighbor or somebody on another continent. And they also want to look at ways to improve overall performance of their members beyond fitness. That's a little TBD, but they're looking at something broader than just physical fitness. Future also introduced with this funding round a new branding and logo. It's kind of interesting. It uh, The symbol is interesting because it has the F for future is two parallel lines that they say really embody the partnership between the member and the coach. So one line, equally spaced, equal weighting, coach and member. Eh, it's clever. And again, remember that Apple Watch is included with the membership to future. So you and your coach can receive a detailed view into all of the key metrics to measure your health, heart rate, rep counts, cardio distances, etc. So the cost of the Future app is $150 a month, so it's not cheap. It is an app in the App Store, subscription-based app, $150 a month, but you do get the personalized training from a dedicated coach on an ongoing basis. So might be something. We'll see how they grow. It's certainly an interesting methodology. I like kind of their hint at a future of coaching beyond just physical fitness. That could be interesting. So we'll see how they progress. Stay tuned. That's it for this week. We'll talk to you next week. With that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to The Fitterist Show. You can follow us on Instagram at Fitterist Mind Body and on Twitter at Fitterist Mind. If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend or subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of The Fitterist Show. My name is Christopher Allen and make it a magical day.